Hey guys, welcome to another Home Lab series video today. In today's video, we're actually going to set up GitLab with uh, our Active Directory server so that essentially you should be able to log into our GitLab server or GitLab web GUI with any user from Active Directory that we created. Um, this is neat and nice because you don't want to be creating users for every single you know developer or anyone in your home that wants to play around with the GitLab server. So figured we'd start with that off because we've been doing a lot of Active Directory directory stuff and just continue on the streak right now with active directory connections so this video is also sponsored by me myself and i so enjoy the content want to send me some free swag or sponsor me my email is in the description below so okay let's get started guys <clears throat> okay so first off what we want to do is actually go to our, our um, AD server domain controller um, and actually create a GitLab like service account, right? Um, the reason why we want to do this is that creating service account is best practice because you never want to hook it up to a, um, you know, user's account because say for example, like I create, I, I hooked up the connection for LDAP for GitLab to to Active Directory with my user account and say, you know, I decide I want to like leave a company or um, I get turned for some unfortunate event, um, then they have to deactivate my user and then it'll stop working. So that's why you always want to use service users or create service users so that essentially when someone leaves, it's not tied to their account, nothing is tied to their account. Um, and you know, your services still continue to work. So that's what we're going to do here. So we will create another user. We will name it GitLab. Um, in this case, so GitLab. Um, we will just put the passwords like GitLab password in this case, but you should obviously make it more secure. <laughs> GitLab password. Uh, and then we'll just put password never expires because the problem is if the password expires also, then they can't log in and you essentially, you've lost the connection. So we'll finish at that. Oh, it does not meet the password. Uh, we'll put an exclamation point. Okay, and then we will uh, capitalize the first character. I swear, if it, if it asks me for a number, I'm gonna be so sad. Oh my god, all right, all right, all right. here we go, here we go. One exclamation point at the end, guys. <laughs> wait, wait. You know what? Test one, two, three, exclamation point. We got this. If there's some packs with that, I, you know, honestly, I'm more surprised that worked. I don't know what the policy is by default, but I'm more surprised that one worked. <laughs> don't ever put test test one, two, three as your as your password either. Exclamation point at that. Don't forget the exclamation point. Okay. So besides that, so now what we're going to do is log into GitLab here um, via SSH, CMD, root at GitLab, dragon.local. Oh, other password. Okay, so we're gonna edit our GitLab RB file. So let's change the directory. Let's make a backup here because you know backups are good just in case I mess it up and I have to go back to the backup. Um, we'll just do it today's date and we will edit this file. Uh, let's make this a little bit bigger because there's gonna be a lot more file, a lot more here. So we're gonna do slash LDAP. So you can see the slash LDAP at the bottom right, right down here. Um, that essentially searches for the first instance of LDAP. So we can see that's not it, hit next. Okay, so the first thing is, we want LDAP to be enabled. So we're gonna set that to true, uncomment that. Um, then we're going to edit this part where it is the GitLab Rails. Um, so here we go. We want this, oh, main. Uh, label, the host will be our AD server, which I believe is on, and we're gonna do the IP, but the um, DNS actually should still work too. Uh, we'll do 145. The port default is 389. We're gonna just leave the SAM account name. Now we're gonna do the bind user. So in this case, we're gonna do um, the GitLab user. So GitLab at dragon.local because we need the domain. Then we need the password. 
which is hilariously test one two three exclamation point. I'm more surprised that they didn't block that. That that should have been like an instant block. <laughs> but anywho, then we got encryption. We're gonna leave it as plain. Um, but if if you set up like LDAP S with TLS, um, we're not gonna do that in this video. We're just gonna try to keep it simple. Um, but we might do that in a different video. So we're gonna just leave it as plain. But if you if you did like TLS, you'd either want to use like star TLS or simple TLS. Um, same here because we're not doing TLS, we don't have to verify certificate. Leave the smart card. Um, there is a section for Active Directory in which if it's an actually an Active Directory server, you want to actually have Active Directory set as true. Um, we will allow username or email login false here. Um, in this case, if you want to just have everything lowercase, you can. The problem here is if you have cap sensitive like usernames, this is going to be an issue. Um, but we're just going to leave it off. But that's just something for you to be aware of. Um, next thing is you need the base domain. Um, so this is kind of like your OU type situation in, in Active Directory. So uh, we're, we're just going to leave it. Um, anything in the users, um, essentially unit, we're going to just leave it at that. So we're going to do CN users and then the DC is dragon and then DC equals local. There is more information um, if you actually Google search GitLab LDAP configuration. Um, there's actually a whole section in regards that talks about each of the settings. So if you're more interested in like, you know, what kind of, you know, buying stuff or other things that you are interested in, you can look in here to kind of evaluate, you know, your use case. Um, but we're trying to keep it simple so that you don't have to like sweat too much. So that's, I believe, essentially it. Then make sure you scroll down and you actually uncomment the EOS. Um, the EOS is important because this essentially says, hey, we're going to load this YAML file and the YAML file starts with this EOS and ends here. Um, anything coming and out, we don't have to worry about. So everything right here. Um, so now we'll save this. Oh, hit escape first and then save this. We'll do a GitLab CTL reconfigure. So this will take a few seconds to reconfigure. But once we do that, there's actually another check that you guys can do. Um, it's actually a GitLab rake, GitLab uh, colon LDAP colon check um, that will essentially go test the lo user login and make sure essentially, hey, these would be essentially like the users that could log in and shows you like the first 100 users. Um, so that is like a very good check to make sure, hey, is my LDAP actually working before you have you you log in. You wonder what what's what's wrong with your life, or it's like I can't log in and tell me invalid username and password. But you're typing in the right username and password, and you're just like, what's wrong? <laughs> um, that's that's usually the first thing to check. Um, the connectivity issue that hopefully um, it it depends if you have like a split network and whatnot, you might have to worry about the connectivity issue. But because we're all in my, my home lab is all on the same network and I'm not, not like connecting to the internet or anything. I don't have to worry about like security groups or firewall rules in, in this case. So everything should just be able to connect and pretty much don't shouldn't have to sweat anything. Um, so we're getting really close. Everything is now restarting on this configuration. So um, and we should be almost there. But um, the other thing to note here is if you want to do specific um, sync configurations like group syncs, admin groups, external groups, or syncing SSH keys. That is a premium feature in which you have to actually pay for uh, GitLab Premium. Um, in this case, we're just running the, the free version, um, so we don't have this. So if you want to play around with this, this stuff, you would have to actually pay for the premium license. So that's something to know um, in case you um, decide you're like, oh, hey, I want to do something with this or whatnot. Um, so this should, now it's a fully reconfigured, took one minute and 32 seconds. So the next thing we'll do is actually test the configuration. Um, so we didn't have any syntax error, which is good, but now we want to do the LDAP check. So this is something that's built into essentially GitLab, Ray, the Omnibus, um, install where it essentially will read the LDAP configuration, try to log in as the user and then view what users should be able to log in to GitLab um, based off of the LDAP connection. So, okay, so you can see that we have the authentication was a success, which is good. 
Now, we have a slight problem because it actually doesn't show us any users that can log in. <laughs> so let's go back, look at our um, GitLab RB file here real quick. Um, and it should be under the base. So, oh, oh, see, it's the typo. I don't have a user. I have users. So if you like looked in here, users. Gotta, gotta, gotta make sure you do it right. Gotta make sure you do it right. So let's update this with users. Reconfigure. And that will take another minute and 32 seconds. So while that's while that's running, we can take a look at other things. So if you want to do like HA LDAP service, that is also a premium feature. So you cannot do HA um, with that. But that is also a good thing to note. Like if, if one of your AD servers did go down or domain controls went down, that your tertiary or secondary one um, can support it. Um, so, but you can also, there's multiple ways you could actually do this in an actual infrastructure environment because you could actually host Active Directory on a low balancing like VIP or something of that sort, so that essentially you would be connecting to AD, but it essentially is, it's already low balanced, so you wouldn't actually need you know to do this. So there's there's multiple ways you can you know set up something. So, but something just to be aware of. Um, I could have created an OU that actually was a GitLab OU, but just trying to keep it simple here so all right it's still going i'm not going to do the ssl configuration in in this case but maybe in the future i've actually never set up active directory tls on ldap um for ldap s but that would be also another very interesting video so <laughs> ideas um, but we can also still go to the login page. Um, it's still loading. It's actually restarting everything. Okay, so that got reconfigured. So now we will do the LDAP check one more time. And this will be, fingers crossed. Maybe I should have read it again. Make sure I didn't have another typo. <laughs> um, you know, with my luck, I... I I might have had another typo. I'm I'm gonna be sad actually. Quickly quick quickly look for the typo before before it actually finishes checking and fails, right? Was it not? Oh, it was base. Base. Oh. Oh god. Users dragon that look. Okay. That should be fine. That should be fine. It does it it does it does take a hot minute. So like do not sweat if this if this takes a little bit. There's, there's like so so many other things that you can actually do with GitLab. Um, the one thing that I will want to explore sometime will actually be um, doing a GitLab like HA because so while we while we wait for this, I'll I'll, I'll talk about it. Um, GitLab actually offers um, architectures for essentially like use num lo number of level of users. So for example, like the first. 2000 you, you essentially they don't necessarily recommend ha but for 3000 they actually do recommend an ha um configuration architecture where it actually provides you the number of nodes the all, all the services on each node that would be running what you would put in your like configuration what would the instance type be depending on which cloud platform you're on um, and this gets really actually kind of crazy of how much you, it, like the omnibus version just like does for you so if you're more, if you're interested in GitLab HA, let me know because I might create one of these, um, but on prem, <laughs> and probably hate my life because I, I mean, the number of servers that needs to be created is a lot actually. <laughs> oh, okay, this is okay. It it just kind of hung to our hands. So now you can see that the check 
happened, connected successfully, and you can see all these users and SAML accounts. Um, so the, the thing to note here is essentially um, some of these aren't actual real users because like here you just have like groups. These are these are groups. Um, so don't don't sweat that. It's no biggie. But you will see that we have our Dragon user and our GitLab user. So those those are in our administrator user and our guest user, which actually speaking of which, uh, yeah, okay. The guest user should always be disabled. If it's not disabled, honestly, you probably should just delete it, but it's disabled, so it is totally fine. You can see the disabled because there's a little icon right over here that shows it's disabled. Um, so, okay, I'm getting, I'm getting way too distracted. Anywho, you can see that the users actually show up. So now that you have that, you should be able to go to your GitLab login here, and I'm already logged in as the administrator user, so let me log out here real quick. So now you now you see that you have a LDAP and a standard. So standard was what we've always been logging in the local GitLab stuff. In this case, now we're gonna try the LDAP connection. So we're gonna log in as Dragon, uh, and hopefully this is the password. I don't even recall if this is the okay, password. Um, LDAP sync in a process. So this could take a few minutes. So it's actually doing an LDAP sync. Um, so now, essentially, sign up. You're welcome. Um, yeah, we can just put DevOps engineer, um, a different reason. Oh, maybe this, I, I don't know how much this actually matters here, <laughs> but now you can see that I've signed in as the dragon user. Um, so now this is great. Now I can go to my preferences and select doc theme before I, uh, hurt my eyes too much. And now you can authenticate in GitLab with essentially any user that you create in this user's OU. So there you go, guys. If you liked the video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.